Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, fun fact, did you know that World War I started because an Austrian guy was killed, and World War II started because an Austrian guy wasn't? Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Paths of Glory from GMT Games. We'll get back in the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Paths of Glory, the First World War, 1914 to 1918 from GMT Games, two players take on the roles of either the Allied powers or the Central powers as they vie for dominance of Europe during that horrible conflict. Now, I'll tell you right now, this game's been out for over 20 years now, nearly a quarter century. I'm not going to get into the weeds here. I'm just going to give you the most basic of rules overviews and tell you my thoughts. Now, Passive Glory is a card-driven game, meaning you're going to use cards for kind of in different ways in this game. And players are going to play through a series of phases in their attempt to win. And the first thing you're going to do is check for any mandated offensives. Now, uh, thematically, of course, allies were insisting that other allies go on the offensive, and that's kind of what's going on here. But essentially, each side rolls a die, and depending on what the die roll is, it may determine uh, who, you know, where, where, what power has to make a mandated offensive, and, and sometimes where they have to make the mandated offensive. So you just means you have to do at least one attack that turn uh, from that power, maybe onto a different, a specific power. Now, after the mandated offensive, players are going to engage in the action round. You're going to essentially play six cards, uh, during the action round, and as I say, you can play cards in different ways. Now, each card uh, has has various has a lot of different information on it. Each card at the top left is going to have a big number and a little number. And now, essentially, the big number means you can play the card for operations. That means you can activate that many groups of units on the board. You have both army and core units on the board. You can go ahead. You can activate them for uh, for movement or for battle. Um, essentially, it's one point to activate one stack, provided they're all of the same nationality. If there are multiple nationalities in there, then it, it will, you know, if there's two nationalities, it'll cost you two points to activate and, and so forth. Um, but you can go ahead, you can activate them, move them into combat and what have you, more on that later. Now, with the second smaller number, you can do strategic redeployment. Essentially, you can redeploy a number of units around the board within your, within your borders. Essentially, it's like rail movement. Now, also, some of the cards have a reinforcement uh, on the bottom. Essentially, you can go ahead and say if you're playing the card for the reinforcement value, you can move your kind of your unit reinforcements up on the general records uh, chart there to indicate that you have that many reinforcement points coming uh, to you that turn. And finally, you can play the card for an event. Now, every card has some kind of text on it, some kind of an event. And if an event has an asterisk on it, it means after you play that event, that card is then out of the game. The decks themselves are separated into three uh, phases, mobilization, limited war, and total war. And this kind of reflects the flow of the First World War itself, where it, it starts out, it's smaller, and then it grows into a much larger conflict. Now, if you have elected to use the operational points, you can move and attack with various units on the board. Now, if you go ahead and you attack with some units, um, you can travel along pathways on the board, and what you're going to do is determine 
uh, you know, who is attacking who, you're going to figure out your combat factors. Essentially, you're going to look at your stats, your combat rating stats on your armies and your core, and you're going to add those together. Now, there is also a possibility of flank attack, meaning you're attacking from two different uh, locations at once, and you have to kind of roll die to determine whether or not that succeeds. If it does, the attacker will get a bonus. The defender is also going to factor into their combat strength any kind of defensive abilities they have. For instance, if there is a fortress they're in, they're going to go ahead and consider that. Now, this time, the attacker can also play any combat cards that may kind of uh, add to his combat strength. The defender can likewise play cards and go back and forth doing that. And then you're going to go ahead and figure out what the DRMs are, if there's any dice roll modifiers that you're going to apply to their rolls. Now, when you got all that figured out, you're going to look at kind of your, your fire table. You've got kind of an army file fire table, a core fire table. You're going to determine kind of, you know, which column you're in uh, based on the strengths. You're going to go ahead, you're going to roll the die, and then you're going to determine what the outcome of that, uh, of that battle is. Now, if you take losses, if you've got an army uh, and you look at your combat loss, um, what your combat loss is, you flip that army over to kind of its wounded side. Now, if it takes further loss, you actually remove that army and you replace it with a core. And if that core is damaged, you flip it over to its damage side. If that damage side is over, then the, the core is removed. Now, after combat, you're going to go to look at the attrition phase. You're going to see if any of the units are eliminated. Uh, if so, you eliminate them from the board. And you go to the uh, siege phase. You look, you see if any uh, players are engaged in siege, siege combat against fortresses, in which case you're going to resolve that. Then you're going to have the war status phase. You're going to see if anybody's won an automatic victory. You're going to adjust the, the, the war status track, see if people, either side's war status has increased in the game. And then you're going to go to the replacement phase. Players can go ahead then and uh, add core armies on the board. They can go ahead and they can flip over damaged units as well. Finally, you're going to have the draw your hand phase. You're going to draw your cards back up uh, to their hand size, and then you're going to end the turn and uh, move the turn marker forward one space. So players are going back and forth. They're rolling and carrying out mandated offensives. They are attacking each other, moving units. They're playing their cards for the operational points, strategic redeployment, the events, and replacements. Uh, they're engaging in combat. They are determining winners, losers, and all the while their victory points are shuffling back and forth because the track, uh, the victory points starts on 10. If ever the victory points get 20 or higher, then the central powers win the game. And if ever the victory point gets down to zero, then the allied powers win. In Paths of Glory, the First World War, 1914-1918. So that's, that's just the basics. I mean, the extreme basics. This game has a tremendous amount of flavor and, and events. Bolshevik Revolution, United States entry into the war. Um, there's a lot going on in this game I'm not even touching on, not even going near. Um, and and par partially because there's so much has been said about this game already. And there's so many great rules, videos up there um, that, uh, you know, I'd recommend those checking out those if you really want to learn the game uh, as a supplement to reading the rules, because you'll want to read the rules. So I'll tell you right now, this is a game that literally I've, I've wanted to play now. I think I, it first came on my radar around 2011, 2012, and I wanted to play it. And it's like every time I've, I've talked to GMT about maybe getting a copy, they say, oh, we, you know, we're sold out, we're sold out. This game is just so sought after. Uh, they keep reprinting it, and I always kept missing it. Well, I finally was able to get my hands on a copy. The good people at GMT finally sent me a review copy to look at, and so I was thrilled to actually play it. And one of the reasons I was interested in, I think it was uh, Jason Matthews told me once he designed Twilight Struggle, which is one of my favorite games, that uh, he was influenced by this game. And uh, so, oh, okay, I, you know, the idea of almost a Twilight struggle kind of experience in the First World War I, it was very appealing to me. First of all, I think the production is really good. The, the, the board actually has two maps. It's got kind of a more updated map for the deluxe version, which you're seeing here. And then it's got kind of a more of the original map on there. Um, first of all, CDGs are very fun, I think. Uh, they can be very fun. I played some that I found a little tedious, but... But generally, uh, they're fun, and it's because I like I like the fact that in these games you can use cards in different ways. They do different things, and and what that means is you have real choices. Every time you draw a card, you, you can do it. And sometimes it's funny because maybe there's there's a certain operational point level on a card you want to play, but then you also really want to play the event, and you can't do both. Or maybe there's a good um, reinforcements. Uh, level that you can play there, but then maybe you want to use it for the strategic reserve, uh, depending on the point value. So there's 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 good choices there, and they and, and again they're meaningful and they're interesting, and I really I really enjoyed that. 
Um, I my, my experience with Paths of Glory was um, I enjoyed it, particularly the combat. I thought the combat was a lot of fun. Um, I like I like that when you get you got to figure out the relative strengths and look at the it, look at the charts and, and determine what's going on. I, I just I get a kick out of that. I, th I find that terribly fun. Um, I've just played through one game of this. I played it with my friend Ray not too long ago. So I mean, you can take that uh, you know where you want. My feeling right now is after having played played the game once, I like it. I think it's a good solid game. But if I'm perfectly honest, I gotta say maybe it was a little talked up for me. Maybe I felt like some people, um, like I say, I, I'd heard so many good things about it. I don't think I'd heard anything negative about it. And so I don't know. I was expecting it to blow me away, and it didn't. I liked it. I had fun with it, but I wasn't blown away. Now here's the thing: because I've only played it once, if I play it more, I may get to that point where I, because I can tell this is a game that has a lot of juices and flavor that are just hidden in there and maybe as i begin to, to to peel away those layers i may this is a game i think potentially i could grow to love you know in time but it's fun i did enjoy it i it's got a lot of gears on it and really what it comes down to is i think where i where i was less than enamored with it is i was hoping it was maybe just a hair more streamlined than it was um, which is not to say it's overly complex i don't think it's overly complex but to me it felt like there was probably here and there, a little more complexity than was really needed. And this is a long game, too. This, this, this could be a very long game, so be aware of that as well. But all things being told, I did enjoy it. I, I, I had fun with it. I'm looking forward to playing it again uh, in the future. Um, and I think, I think if you're somebody that does enjoy CDGs and, and, and war games, uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this. So recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Paths of Glory, The Great War... Uh, the First World War, 1914-1918, is buy it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, I ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. I'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd ask you also, ladies and gentlemen, to please check, uh, check out my other channel. That is Cody Carlson, Ph.D., where we talk about military history, books on history. I'm posting uh, some of my lectures on there. So please check that out, and uh, please subscribe to that channel. It would mean a lot to me. Also, please leave a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. And I'd also ask you, if you really do enjoy the show, you like the kind of content we bring here, please consider clicking on the Super Thanks button here and leaving a contribution. Again, we would really appreciate it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, what do you call a German soldier in World War I? A not-yet-Z. Please somebody help me.